Hey guys, it's Jake again, and this is the second of our little mini-series of MATLAB tutorials meant to try to ease you guys into uh, some of the more useful features of MATLAB to be used with 3 eo 4 uh, Today we're going to take a look at uh, making matrices as well as performing some basic matrix calculations, and then also look at a few shorthand functions that are uh, designed in MATLAB to try to make your life a little bit easier. Now, uh, just like the last tutorial, if you feel like uh, these topics are not going to be of any value to you, or you get sick of listening to my voice, or you know you want to go outside and play frisbee, then I wouldn't be insulted at all if you go ahead and you know just turn this off and, and go ahead and use something that you think your your time is better suited for. You're not obligated to watch this at all. This is meant for your enjoyment or for your benefit. So if you're not going to benefit from it, please don't feel like you have to stick around. So what I'm going to do is open up my editor here and just like last time I made a new file here I called it t2 now I've already saved it I've gone ahead and saved it into my default directory over here uh, in my documents and what you'll notice is that I've already inserted our famous three lines which from tutorial one you should know are uh, very important to always include uh, for various reasons and now the reason that I went ahead and saved this immediately I want to mention quickly before we move on and is that there's another benefit of using the editor and that's that as you're going through your code and you're going ahead and adding more and more lines you can uh, run it every once in a while like I mean why wouldn't you uh, every four or five lines you know you just get up here you click the run button or you hit F5 and and just make sure that everything's working properly so the last thing you want to do is write a 200 line you know code for your 3E04 project or assignment or something and then press the run button at the 11th hour and 59th minute and realize you've got a mistake up here on say line 12 uh, which is going to affect the rest of your code from that point down and, and nobody wants to have to deal with that so you know just a little piece of advice just you know hit that run button every once in a while and you know save yourself some headaches it'll it'll pay off in the end so the first thing that we're going to do here is talk about uh, making vectors and matrices in MATLAB so I know this is very basic stuff and if you guys have already uh, done this kind of thing before then bear with me but I figure we should start at the beginning with everybody here so I'm gonna make another section like I like to do with my little comment bars there just because it helps to kind of section off what we're doing or what we're looking at so as a TA if I'm looking at this I know what this little area is going to be kind of like a header in a word document or something and the first thing I'm gonna do is make a, a vector a and I'm gonna make a column vector so it's gonna be horizontal and I can do that by putting it in square brackets. Now, one thing about uh, writing in MATLAB is some people prefer to uh, open and close their brackets immediately and then kind of fill in what, what goes inside the, uh, the brackets. Now, that's a perfectly legit strategy, and sometimes I use that too. What it really helps do is um, avoid, say, opening three brackets and then closing four or accidentally closing two or just losing track of where your brackets are. So it's a good strategy for that. Uh, if you think it'll help you, then go ahead and use it. So I'm going to go ahead and write this vector. It's a uh, 1 by 4 vector. Call it 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to put that semicolon there to suppress the output. And that is going to make a column vector, which means a horizontal vector, a vector with only columns. And it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So there you go. And I could do this in several different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'll show you. So you can see that I cleared out my workspace over there and now I've got A over there and it's telling me what its value is. So I can type that in and look at that, I got one, two, three, four. So what I like to do, I don't like using commas um, when I'm defining vectors and luckily MATLAB doesn't require that you use commas. It just requires that it's inside these square brackets here. So if I go ahead and just space them out, one, two, three, four, and I call it up over here, it's gonna appear in almost the exact same way that I typed it in, which I think is kind of useful. Now, um, the, another cool thing is that I can make, uh, say I want to make a row vector, which is vertical. Well, I could make it like this, one, two, three, four, with semicolons, because every time you put a semicolon inside the square brackets, it'll like enter onto a new line. So if I run this and I call up B, you're, you're going to see that it's one, two, three, four. But another benefit of the editor, which is so great, is that you can enter these vectors almost the exact same way as you see them. So I'm just going to tab these over so they line up and I can tab this over. And as long as they're inside these square brackets, if I put things on new lines, uh, MATLAB is going to know that I'm looking for those things to be on different lines when I put them into my workspace. So if I call up B there, you'll see that after running it, it's still the exact same one, two, three, four. 
And personally, I just like this a little bit better. It's just a little bit easier to visualize uh, a vertical uh, vector like that if I type it in that way. So that would be making some basic vectors. Now what about uh, some matrices? So I'm going to make capital A. Uh, bear in mind, MATLAB, case sensitive. So capital A is different than small a. Just keep that in mind when you're doing your work or something like that. So if I want to make a matrix, I have to do it row by row. So say I want to do one, two, three, four. And then I can separate the, I can go to a new line with the semicolon, just like I did before. I'm going to make a four by four matrix here. There you go. And now that's going to make a matrix A, if I run that, which is exactly as I put it in there, which is cool. But just in the same way that we uh, used new lines up here to define our small b, I can also use new lines to define a matrix. So let's say I have, I'm going to use tabs so they keep nice and evenly spaced apart. One, four, seven, six. Um, let's try, let's say, two, 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 two. Just, just like that. Now, so you'll see that this is a 4x4 four four matrix. It's inside these square brackets, and I've just set it up just like a regular matrix might look like. So if I go ahead and run that, well, look at how smart MATLAB is. It goes ahead and exports that thing just like that. So that's another useful trick that I, that I vastly prefer uh, when writing my own codes. If I need to uh, define a matrix like that, I find that to be very useful to try to keep things uh, straightforward in my mind as I'm reading through the code, instead of having to look at all these semicolons. So another thing about making matrices is that, you know, if I were to accidentally leave one of these spaces blank, I'm going to get a warning coming up that says all matrix, matrix rows, excuse me, uh, must be the same length, uh, which of course makes sense. I mean, you don't want to be making some random thing with a blank in it. So if I try to run it, it's going to warn me up here that it's not going to work. But if I try to run it, I'm going to get an error, and it's going to say that the dimensions of the matrices have to be uh, consistent, basically. So concatenated mean if I just append rows or columns onto one another. They all have to be the same length. So obviously this row or this column, however you want to look at it, is a different length, so it's not going to work. So I'll go ahead and put that back. Um, another thing that's useful about uh, when you get errors and you're using the editor is that it'll tell you what line the error occurred on. So in this case, it, it calls me up at line 19. So bear in mind that lines 20, 21, 22 all don't really count because they don't have like an equal sign on it or any new math. They're just kind of all in the same statement. So uh, line 19 counts for this entire matrix. And I take a look down here and I see, oh, well, as a matter of fact, I did have a mistake right there. I was missing something. So then I go ahead and run it and everything's hunky-dory. We're back to normal. So that's just a way to, uh, to quickly make vectors and matrices. I'll get into some shorthand ways of making very large vectors and matrices in a moment. But that's pretty useful. So let's take a look at, say, some vector math. So I'll go down here, new, new section, vector math. I just copied that out of an old file because this is like my fourth take doing this because the last time the sound cut out on me, it was pretty sweet. Anyway, so there's my new section for vector math right there. And what we're going to do first is take a look at uh, normal vector multiplication. So I'll just go ahead and put that in there, normal multiplication. And when I say normal, I mean vector multiplication or matrix multiplication, just like you did it in first year algebra or, uh, or second year math or whatever. Whereas, you know, you multiply a one by four and a four by one together and they give you a one by one vector in return. So that's like just standard move matrix math, uh, probably what you would already think of when I were to tell you to multiply two vectors together. And you do that quite simply. <coughs> by using the multiplication operator. So there you go, A times B. Just like you're multiplying two scalars together, scalars being just numbers, right? So just like in the first tutorial we did PV equals NRT, we went ahead and calculated the number of moles using the, the star and the divide sign, just like you might imagine. Well, the exact same thing is going to work here, but if we're using two matrices, what we're going to end up doing is getting a, uh, a proper matrix or a formal matrix multiplication out of the two of them. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our 1 by 4 vector A and our 4 by 1 vector B, and it's going to make a 1 by 1 matrix or a 1 by 1 scalar, which is basically the dot product between A and B. So if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to get C, and you can see that I'm just going to get 30, which is just 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4, as you might imagine. So now keep in mind, if I transpose B, which is 
um, denoted by this single quotation mark or the prime symbol, I suppose. And I try to run this. It's, it's not going to work because it tells me that the matrix dimensions must agree. So we know that I can't multiply a 1 by 4 by a 1 by 4, which is what B prime would be. So that's not allowed. So I'm not allowed to do that. So if you ever get this kind of error, it's usually because one of your matrices is kind of uh, transposed or shifted into the incorrect direction. So just go ahead and uh, fix them up so that they line up and you'll have no problems. So similarly to that, if I take our big A and big C matrices, I can go ahead and multiply them together. I'm going to multiply two 4 by 4s and I'm going to get a 4 by 4 in return. So if I go ahead and run that, I'm going to get C and you can see C is the multiplication between A and B. It's the normal multiplication. Which is very straightforward, very standard. Sorry for wasting your time. But what I'm going to get into now is probably the most important thing you're going to learn, which is called element by element multiplication. Now element by element multiplication, you can kind of think of it as a dot product between two vectors or two matrices. Whereas, say I have two vectors that are both 4 by 1s, I'm going to take the first entry in each, multiply them together, but instead of with a dot product by like adding that product plus the 2 times 2 together plus the third times third together plus the fourth times fourth, I'm actually just going to leave them in a vector of the same length and keep them as their own numbers. So I'll show you what I mean. The dot multiplication symbol performs element by element multiplication. So that would be a1 times b1 uh, comma a2 times b2 comma a3 times b3 what you're going to end up with is another vector of the same length of a and b. Now to that end you have to note that instead of having them line up so that their inner dimensions are the same like you do with normal vector multiplication with the dot times or element by element multiplication what you need to have is them to be the exact same dimensions so we would have to have a 1 by 4 times a 1 by 4 which is why I'm going to go ahead and use b prime in this case so if I go ahead and run that I'm gonna get d and now if we look at a and b sorry let's 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 try that again d a and b prime you'll see that 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. So that is what the element by element multiplication does right there. Now that's extremely useful because, you know, just for a very quick example, if we're doing stuff in 3E where you have to plot something over a variety of, of times, say from 0 to 20 seconds in intervals of 0 0.1 seconds, and they all follow a certain uh, function, or each uh, position that you're plotting, for example, is dependent on time, then the dot multiplier will go ahead and, uh, and do that element by element multiplication to, to create a new vector of positions, kind of like dragging down a column or a row of cells in, in Microsoft Excel. So now the same thing works if we use the, uh, the big matrices. So hang on a second, bear with me. There we go. So we get big D is A dot times B. So this is also going to result in a 4 by 4 like the last one, but it's going to be a little bit different. So if we take a look at D, A, and B, we'll see that the top left corner, 1 times 1 is 1, and then 1 in, and 4 times 2 is 8, 7 times 3 is 21, 6 times 4 is 24, etc., etc., down to the bottom right, 5 times 5 is 25. So you can see that that's how that dot, multiplica dot multiplication excuse me, works. So the dot uh, symbol also works when you're uh, manipulating vectors or matrices themselves. So each of the vectors, each of the entries in the vectors, my bad guys. So, you know, if we want to go ahead and square every element in A, but still have a vector that is the same length as A, we can't do just A to the power of 2. So I can go over here, I'm still, I'm still in my workspace, I still have A. But if I try to do A to the power of 2, it's going to give me a problem because I'm not allowed to square a vector. That just doesn't work. Um, like, I'm not allowed to multiply a vector by itself because that vector is obviously not going to work out in terms of dimensions. I'm allowed to do A times A prime, which will just give me the dot product of A and itself, but I'm not allowed to do A squared. But what I can do is A dot to the power of 2, which squares each of the elements in A. So if I do call up A2 versus A, then 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and so on. And you can see that that's going to work just like that. So that, that is how we would square each element in a matrix. 
So the last thing I'm going to look at in terms of um, basic vector kind of math, I'll scroll down give you guys a view down here, is uh, scalar multiplication and addition. So if I just multiply an entire vector or matrix by a scalar, just like you would uh, when you're doing it by hand, you would go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to multiply every element in that uh, vector or matrix by that scalar. So if I just do a times 5 or big A times 5, then every element is going to be multiplied by 5. Uh, that's fine. Now adding the dot doesn't make a difference in this case. You can still do dot times 5 if, you, if that makes you a little more comfortable, but just like just think of it like normal matrix math. Just multiplying a, a vector or a matrix by a scalar will cause that to happen. Similarly, um, adding a scalar, say 5, to a vector or matrix will add 5 to every entry. So if I go ahead and do this, I call up A3, uh, that was A2, sorry, A3, and then we'll compare that to A. You can see everything in A is multiplied by 5, and then if I call up A4, you can see that 5 is added to every element in A. So one thing I want to mention is that the dot multiplier and the dot, it works for division as well, but it does not work for addition or subtraction because no such thing really exists. So you can see I'm going to get an error here. Um, it doesn't like the plus coming after the dot. If I try to run it, it's going to give me an error. It tells me that it has an unexpected operator. So I'll go ahead and go over here and say, whoops, my bad. And then it should be fine. So I'll save that up. All right. So two more quick sections. The first thing is uh, some shorthand uh, functions to make larger matrices. So the first one that I'm going to take a look at, sorry, let's get rid of these. We'll do this one at a time. Uh, the first one that I'm going to take a look at is uh, if we want to make a large vector of many, many numbers. So say I wanted to make a vector, I'm simulating from some x, and it's going from 0 to 10 in steps of 0.01. So what this is going to do is make a vector 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, all the way up to 9.99 and 10. And I'm going to call that as follows in the brackets, and we'll get to why it says those brackets are unnecessary in a moment. But in the brackets, I'm going to go ahead and put 0, which is my starting point, colon, as in take steps of 0 0.01, colon, 2, 10. So in steps of 0 0.01, which is in the middle, I'm going to go from 0 to 10, and that's how I would enter that in there. So MATLAB is going to tell you that the brackets for these kinds of things are unnecessary, because if you use that colon between uh, the two colons uh, in between three numbers there, it knows that you're going to make this vector. Uh, I personally like having it there just because it looks a little like clearer to me, but if you want to get this nice green square that tells you there are no warnings, uh, you're going to have to delete them. It's not going to make a difference in terms of performance either way. It'll give you the exact same thing. So if I go ahead and run that and I call up X, I'm going to get a screen full of garbage because this is 1,001 columns and only one row, so it can't really fit at all. Sometimes it's easier to take a look at x prime, uh, which, is a, which is a row vector, which is just the numbers 0 all the way up to 10. So there you go. And that's how you do that. So another useful one is the zeros command. So the zeros command is... Uh, uh, very useful if you want to just make a huge uh, number of zeros. So in this case, what we're doing is making a 10 by 10 matrix of zeros by using a function already built in MATLAB called zeros. And when we pass in that number, it's going to make an n by n matrix of those zeros. So it's going to make a 10 by 10. So if I call up y, look at that. Let me get a little more space here. If I call up y, look at that. We got a 10 by 10 matrix of zeros. So similarly, also with the zeros function, you can make um, an n by m matrix of zeros. So if I don't want, say, a 10 by 10, instead I want maybe a 10 by 5, then I can put in a second number here, and then this, then it will recognize that this is the number of rows I want, and this is the number of columns I want. So that'll make a 10 by 5 matrix of zeros. So this is good for filling in during loops. Uh, we'll get into that in the next tutorial when we take a look at for loops and while loops and stuff. Uh, so similarly, if you just wanted a vector, like, say, a single vector of zeros, then you could put a 1 over here and, and it would do that. So let's take a look at Z. There you go. It's a 10 by 5 matrix of zeros. Uh, three more. First one is the identity matrix. You can make an identity matrix using the MATLAB function I. I being EYE -E, as in like a human I. Uh, this is because it doesn't like using letters as functions uh, for obvious reasons. For example, I want to use the capital I as my variable for that. So I don't want to be uh, calling something that might also use that. 
Um, so the identity matrix has to be square, obviously, so it only takes one input, uh, say this time a 5, which means I'm going to get a 5 by 5 matrix. That's a T. That is the identity. There you go. Cool? All right. Two more. This one is the ones. So this is, works the exact same way as zeros does, where the first number I put in is the number of rows, second uh, number I put in is the number of columns, but it's going to give me nothing but a bunch of ones. So if I run that and call up O, I get a 10 by 1 vector of ones. And then the last one, again, works the same way as ones and zeros, but this is called the rand function, which makes a random number between 0 and 1 uh, inclusive. And again, number of rows, number of columns are what I enter there. So if I run that and call up R, I'm going to get that. Uh, let's call R prime. Might be a little easier to see. So you can see that uh, there you go. I've got a nine by four, or sorry, a four by nine. Uh, this is the transpose, which is why it's a nine by four. And one thing about the rand function is that every time you call it, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to get different numbers. So remember, point six nine four eight. If I run this again and call R prime, I get point eight one four three. So it's going to change every time. So just keep that in mind. So the very last thing that we're going to go through, sorry, this is uh, taking a little while. I'm trying to do math in my head as to how long it's actually been. I think it's been close to 20 minutes, which is a little bit lengthy, but oh well. We're going to take a quick look at indexing and sizing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new section for indexing and sizing. <coughs> so the first thing is that say I want to know the size of a matrix. Well, I can go ahead and use the size function. So I can pass in a matrix or a vector, and if I use the size function, it's going to return a vector to me with the number of rows and the number of columns in whatever I pass in. So in this case, it's going to be A. So if I do that and I call up size A, oh, A size, pardon me, little dyslexia going on, no big deal. Then uh, I get the number of rows and then the number of columns in A. So A size is actually a uh, one by two uh, little vector with that information. So let's say I didn't want the vector. Say I only wanted to know how many rows or how many columns are in A. Well, I can do A rows as size of A. And now if I put a second input in, I can tell it which of these two numbers I want. So either I want the first one, which returns the number of rows in A, or I want the second one, which returns the number of columns in A. So if I go ahead and run that, and I go A rows, I get four A calls, I get the four where you'll remember that A size was the two fours. So I got this guy from here, and I got this guy from here. So there you go. Uh, the one other one that I'm going to suggest that you guys take a look at, but be very careful with, is called the length function. So let's say I wanted to know how long a vector was, or let's say I you know, didn't uh, make it automatically, or I'm using it in a loop, and I want to know how long it goes for without having to count it out by hand. Obviously, if I were to call x, and count out all these things, it would be a little bit annoying. Uh, it's a little easier because they're all in point oh 0.01s in this case, but like say they're not, so you want to know how long it has to be. What you can do is use the uh, length command. So the length command will return the largest dimension of a, uh, of a matrix or vector. That is completely wrong. Um, so you've got to be careful when you're using it with matrices. Say you're doing it with this 4 by 9 here, it would return 9 to you. Um, so that's why I usually only use length when I know I'm dealing with vectors of some kind. So I know that, that x is a vector, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if I call up xl, it's going to return 1001, because that's the number of entries that are in x. So the last thing we're going to do, i got four more lines to do here. Uh, the first one is indexing, or they're all indexing, rather. So Let's say I want to know what the last entry in a vector is. If I want to know what the first entry in a vector is, I just put in a 1 like that. And I know that x starts at 0, because I, I made it that way. But if I want to know the last entry in a vector, um, I use, um, in curly brackets, or in round brackets, I suppose, um, I call up the index end, which is the last entry in whatever vector this is. So think of this just like f at x, or like v at x, or some sort of vector. If I'm looking for specific indexes, I'm not using a function in this case, but instead I'm just calling out a certain position in a vector. So in this case, I want the last one. So if I do x end after running that, it'll show me that it's 10. And I happen to know that there's 1,001 elements in x, so if I call x at 1,001, I also get 10. So there you go. That's the last That's the last entry, also known as the length of x. Go figure. So another thing is that if I want a certain position in a matrix, say I want the 
uh, two, three position in a matrix. So say I want the second row, third column. I'm looking for this two in A right now. I can call up A at two comma three. I'm going to call it A two three as its variable name. And that's going to return the two three uh, position of A. So if I do that, I'll do A two three. I'm going to get that specific two. So there you go. So that's fine, but let's say I want an entire row or an entire column of A. What do I do? Well, if I want an entire column of A, a clever way to think of it might be that if I want, say, this entire second column, I want all the rows of A, but I want only the second column of A. So I'm going to call that in as all the rows, which is denoted by a colon, meaning everything, comma, just the second column. So that's going to return every row in the second column or the second column of A. Similarly, if I want an entire row, I say maybe I want this fourth row. I say I want the fourth row, but I want all the columns. So I want just this guy, and then I want him, and him, and him, and him. And that's going to return the entire fourth row of A. So let's say I run that. A, call two. You see I got that one column. And A, row four. I get that row, just like I intended. Anyway, that's all I have for right now. Uh, I hope that that was helpful to you, and I, and I hope that you maybe learned something if you didn't know already, or maybe this will be a little easier for you going forward. A um, lot of comments, of course, which I, I'm a big fan of, making lots of comments as you go through your code. Um, next time, we're going to take a look at plotting in for loops, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and put this code up online on uh, Avenue for you guys to take a look at if you ever want to just refer back to what uh, certain things do. And uh, yeah, if you have any feedback, again, don't hesitate to send me an email. Thanks a lot for your time, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.